Hi and welcome to Free Do Hub. As part of our course on network security and penetration testing, we'll be using HPing today in Kali Linux and we'll learn how the flood attacks or the sin attacks are being launched through Kali Linux on any other operating system. Now keep a note of it that it's an educational course. We are not teaching hacking, we are just letting the students know that what is a ping attack, what is a sin attack and how can we prevent it. You must know it on in order to understand and if you are um, observing your intrusion protection systems or uh, intrusion detection systems, you must know that a sin attack or a flood attack is taking place so how can you stop it and uh, how does it actually work. So as you can see we have uh, two machines over here, it's on a virtual environment uh, host on the adapter, I have ch changed the settings for the virtual machine so that only these two machines would be talking to each other. Now let's go to the settings of the virtual machine, go to the Kali Linux and uh, go to network and then change it to host only adapter so that it's only talking to the virtual machine and it's not going on the network or on the internet for any tasks. For, as far as Windows XP is concerned, I am giving only 256 MB of RAM for this virtual machine and if you check the network settings it's also on host only adapter so that it is communicating with Kali Linux. So first things first, let's try to get the IP addresses of uh, both machines. So for Windows XP, we'll type IP config and it would give us an IP address is 192.168.56.103. And uh, for our Kali Linux machine or the root access, provide the password. And uh, now you'll have to type if config and it would show you the IP address for this virtual machine. So the Kali Linux IP address is 192.168.56.102 whereas for our Windows XP it's 192.168.56.103. Now we'll have to check the connectivity between the two virtual machines. So I'll simply ping from Windows uh, XP 192.168.56.102 and as we can see it is able to reach Kali Linux. Now we'll ping from Kali Linux to 103 and as we can see that we are getting a response. So that's good now. It means that both machines can see each other and uh, there is a communication in between those two machines. Now, uh, first of all, as you know that if we are using uh, Kali Linux, we'll have to know the target that uh, what are the open ports on our target machine. So in order to find that, we can use nmap and then we can type in address for 103 and it is scanning now the Windows XP machine and it found out that port 135, 139, 445 and 3389 is open which can be compromised. Now that's how they try to scan the other machines on the network in order to get the information that which ports are open to be targeted. Now uh, we use hping3 so for that we'll drive hping3 and then if you want to know the basic information about it you can simply type help and press enter so it would show you all the flags that you can use uh, in order to uh, craft an attack against a test machine uh, where you want to check the sin attack or flood attack uh, we'll be using some of them this is a good reference if you want to check the information if you want to have detailed information about hping3 let's clear the screen again and we'll type man and then we'll type hping3 and press enter so now it's giving you a detailed information about uh, what's going on and uh, what are the different flags and what's the syntax of it and how can you use it so it's a very helpful uh, manual available on hping3 itself so press h for help or q for quit so we quit it we'll clear the screen now now uh, we'll start it from hping3 and actually we can use hping3 instead of nmap in order to scan the open ports on our target machine so in order to do that we'll type hping3 and then we'll type minus minus scan and then we'll type 1265535 which are all the ports on our target machine um, you can reduce the number of ports but just for the sake of understanding i'm just explaining this you can write 192.168.56.103 
68.56.103 this is our windows xp target machine and we'll press enter so now it would scan all ports and it would tell us that uh, which are the ports which are closed that's the problem with this kind of scan that it does not tell you exactly that which ports are open but it would scan all ports and it would show you the ports which are closed only as you can see all replies received done not responding ports are these so now if you want to scan all ports on the computer with the service name and you don't want to expose your identity we type in command xping uh, hping3 minus minus scan and then all ports uh, ip address of the target minus s for the services and minus minus random as the random source so that our identity is not exposed that who's actually trying to scan so here it's showing you all the services and their port numbers which are running on our target target host which is windows xp now that's the uh, the output that we have received now next is we want to see the actual attack on our windows xp machine so in order to keep an eye on we'll open the performance parameters on windows xp so the performance monitor is on as you can see the activity which is taking place on our windows xp and then we can go to task manager and we can click on networking uh, to see the overall performance of the pc and the plan utilization which is zero percent at the moment so uh, if we launch an attack on our target machine uh, we'll type hping3 and then we'll type the uh, service for example uh, minus s and then we'll type 192.168.56.102 which is the ip address of this machine then we'll type minus a and we'll type 192.192.168.56.103 which is our target machine and for example we want to use port 135 for attack and then we type flood so it's going to flood our Windows XP machine with SYN attack. Now as you can see that it's taking place and you can see the utilization of the network interface card went up. Further, the utilization has piped up here as well, which is showing that an attack is taking place. Now, of course, we are doing it using a single computer. If multiple computers are doing it, or if you are using multiple windows of Kali Linux uh, uh, in order to launch the attack, uh, you can see a much, mu much more higher and bigger magnitude of the attack. You can already see the CPU utilization went up to 97%. So in order to cancel the attack, you will press Ctrl C and it would be stopped. And as you can see, the CPU utilization went down and even the network utilization went down. So if it's consuming lots of resources of the PC, the remote per perform really slow and they'll not be able to perform operations. If it's a server, uh, the scenario would be much more difficult. Now, uh, let's see another uh, kind of uh, hping command which is used where uh, we define the uh, number of packets that we want to send to our windows xp machine and then we can even define the size of the packets uh, so that if you are targeting a remote server uh, how do they do it actually and uh, what's the process so we'll type hping uh, hping3 and then we'll type minus C and then we'll type for example 10,000 and then we'll type minus D and then we'll give the packet size for example let it give like 10,000 here as well minus S for the services and then minus P for the port um, which we'll be using 135 and then we'll flood it and uh, we want to use RAND source so that our identity is not disclosed and then we'll give the IP address of the target and press enter. Now as you can see the network utilization went really up as it was one or two percent CPU utilization is varying somewhere around 97% to 95% and 99% so now this machine is being targeted where we are sending lots of packets of the specially crafted size and the number of packets to our 
remote target machine. Uh, so we can press Control C to cancel it. Now let's try to understand that how the RAND source flag works actually and if it hides our identity or not. So what we'll do is that we'll maximize our Kali Linux uh, window and we'll try to open Wireshark which is pre-installed on Kali Linux. Open it and uh, you'll have to select the interface which is active. In our case, it's Ethernet 0. Run the same command again and see the source is different. It's not 192.168.56.103 which is our target machine IP address. Here you can find the source address has been changed to 75.56. And if we we'll carry on the attack, you can see it's constantly changing the source IP address. If you want to filter the results, you can type IP.DST for the destination, equal equal 192.168.56.103 and press enter it's filtering the results and now you can see that it is showing all the results which are for the destination 192.168.56.103 so that's the main purpose of using RAND source so that the identity is hidden now the other kind of attack that uh, usually takes place on the network using HPing3 is where uh, the uh, hacker would try to send or would target a machine uh, with sending the bytes to the target machine uh, with no service or anything mentioned in that. So for that we type HPing3 and then we'll type uh, IP address. 168.56.103 and then we'll type minus minus data and then we'll type the number of bytes that we want to send to our remote or the target machine and press enter as you can see that now it's sending those 10,000 or 100,000 packets to your remote target machine and it would keep on sending it. So if a number of computers are used in order to launch an attack, um, that's how they do it. Okay, now next thing that we would try it, that uh, we would try to flood the computer again, uh, which is our remote machine with HPing3. And this time we are using minus S and then we are typing the size of the packets for example 5000 in this case and then we'll type flood and uh, we'll give the IP address of the target machine 192.168.56.103 and press enter so now again network utilization is going up CPU utilization is 97% and you can see a spike here as well so again, a attack was launched on Windows XP over here. Now we want to uh, attack the uh, remote machine using the same kind of command, which is hping3. But this time what we will do is we'll uh, give the IP address of the remote machine, 56.103. And then we'll uh, flood it with uh, the Flood filter minus minus flood and then we'll type brand source and we'll type minus minus data and we'll send packets using a random source to the remote machine so in this way again you can see the network utilization went up to 40 percent and CPU utilization is 96 percent now the last attack that uh, we would launch on our Windows XP is that we'll clear the window and uh, uh, we'll try to uh, freeze the remote machine. It could be a remote server or an individual computer uh, so that the services on that machine would stop completely. It is called a land attack which is uh, abbreviation of local area network denial attack and it freezes the remote computer completely and you won't be able to do anything as you can see that i can click start i can go to programs and other things uh, but if i'll type in hping3 and then i'll type minus s for the service 
um, it's a LAN attack because the uh, IP address of the source and destination would be the same. So we'll type 192.168.56.103 and then we'll type minus A and then again 192.168.56.103 and then we'll type minus K and we'll type minus S and then we'll type 135 and we'll type again uh, the port for 135 and we'll simply flood it. Press enter. And now you can see that this machine is completely frozen. We cannot do anything. We cannot click anywhere. We cannot change any settings on it. The PC is completely out of reach. If we we'll cancel it again and uh, we'll try it, you can see it's showing now that there was a spike, but when and uh, uh, what was the actual timing of it, nothing like that is appearing here. So let's try it again. We'll use the same command and press enter and it didn't give it a chance even to show the CPU utilization or anything and the PC is completely out of hand. So that was a short tutorial on HPing 3. We are reminding you again that this tutorial is for the educational purpose only. Um, you can easily be detected on firewalls and intrusion protection systems or intrusion detection systems and there are heavy penalties if someone is launching attacks on actual servers, websites or workstations. So uh, kindly use it for educational purposes and I hope you understood some new things today. That's it for today. Thank you very much.